hope we're all doing well, picking some locks and keeping it bloody legal. And welcome to the Sunday Beginners Series, where each and every Sunday I cover topics to help beginners build a great little foundation into this awesome, awesome sport known as lock sport, which is lock picking. And welcome to part two. That's right, number two of the Deer Antler Pick Handle Build. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak preview of what we're up to at the moment. And I'll explain why it looks like this as we go through and what I'm going to be doing about it at the end. But this is not finished. This is only just the beginning of the finishing process. So, needs a bit of clean up, but I'll go through all that. So, uh, let's head out to the workshop and get stuck into it. Has dried. As you can see, but there's still quite a bit of excess, but that's okay. What I'm going to do now is uh, flatten these pins down just to try and squeeze them in a wee bit more. Just holding it onto the vise and then tapping it with a hammer just to compress that brass a little bit. And then we can go through to shaping. I'm going to remove all this excess glue. I'm going to use the belt sander to bring this down to the pick so that it comes in line with the metal and then file down and well you'll see as we go through but she is stuck solid the only thing is this time I'm going to grab my paint sprayers mask my respirator uh, so I'm not smelling the rotten smell that this puts out so let's get into time lapse and go through it all Okay, so kind of got the profile I want. I just knocked down those brass pins that are in it so that you know it sits nice and comfortably in my hand. The only thing I'm going to do now is I might taper off this end a little bit more just on the butt end of it here, and then I'm going to shape it out. So it's slightly more rounded. And I thought about leaving the brown on there. But, you know, I'm going to coat this in something just to help protect it. Um, not saying it's not hard, but just to, it's going to get dirty and grubby. Not just from you. 
loose because this is quite porous so you want to coat it but um let me finish i want to round out this a bit more do a heap more sanding and cleaning up to it and uh we'll see how it's looking on well, now my time lapse a bit of it so let's get into it okay so let me get this off <laughs> Okay, so at the moment I'm just using the ramp, the file and the sander just to round this all out and get it to the right shape that I want. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I won't bore you as time lapsing all that. But all I'm doing is literally just holding it in the vise using a flat file and I'm just going around and shaping this all to the right shape that I'm after. So I'll finish doing that and do the whole pick and then we'll continue on with the rest of it. So yeah I won't bore you as a bit of a time lapse of that. But pretty much all I'm doing is I've got it in the vise the way I want it. Take the flat file and I'm just gently working the antler into the shape I want, but it bloody stinks so I'm wearing the face mask. So uh, let me uh, get into it and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so here is the fully sanded pick. I've shaped it all, got it all fully sanded, nice and smooth and looking pretty. But as I said to protect because it is quite porous as you can see there's a little bit of a gap in the uh, glue in there as you can make out. Got a little trick to fill all this in and protect that wood. Some acrylic top coat for cars, giving it a stir. And this is a very, very precise method of coating. You go fishing. So I'm just going to let that drain, create a thin layer, knock it back, coat it, knock it back, coat it, knock it back, coat it, and you get a really, really nice buff. Start put shine on it. Just going to get this. There we go. It's going to fill in all those cracks. And you just knock back bits of drip off. Uh, let's let that go down and dry. As I show you outside in the workshop, I dipped this pick into the clear coat. And as you can see, it is spit on the pick here. I want to clean that up. But downside to dipping it in there is you do get little air bubbles and that runoff on the end there. It's still not fully cured yet. As you can see it's still soft. Because I can squish it down and then push it up. But once that cures what I'm going to do is completely knock it right back so it's a very thin layer and smooth it all out. And then I'm going to dip it again and then knock it back just to build up very, very fine layers all over the pick. The other thing I like about dunking it down into it is it really does fill in any little gaps that may form. Like I had little air bubbles in the glue. 
that when I not sanded it all back they showed up so it really does fill it all in and then yeah I'm going to cut it right back with I'll start off with some 600 wet and dry go up to 1200 and then I'm going to dip it again do a couple of coats of that and then I'm going to cut it with some cutting compound and then buff this up so it has a real mirror finish to it and it really gives some depth into the colour of the pick but it's not turning out too bad it looks pretty cool but it will be a hell of a lot better once it's actually finished so I'll probably show you this in the next video this is going to be a three-parter um, cutting it back and then recoating it and then letting that cure and then cutting it back and then using the cutting compound to finish off the handle but it, the other reason why I dipped it is where I chipped that end where I put the rivet in it's kind of started to fill that in which is good so you won't be able to see it once it's all cut back nice even and uh, makes it look like a car with the colour that the uh, clear coat brings out. My camera will cooperate. Come on. Come on. Focus on it. So, I am quite happy with this so far. It's been a fun build, but, uh, yeah, really need to knock all that back and clean it right up. So, that'll be in the next one. So, there we go. That's part two of the pick build out of deer antler so as always always follow the codes keep lock support legal you know don't go do anything stupid don't forget down the bottom here is that little subscribe button right next to it's little bell icon the way youtube runs and there you got to hit both of them that way you can stay up to date as soon as i upload a video you'll be one of the first to know you know try to upload two to three to four videos per week depending on work and everything else that have got going on don't forget to come join us on discord extraordinary league of pickers links in the description so click on that link and come and join us don't forget, you'll also find Dark Arts Lockpick on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I'll put up post photos of what's going on in the background, all the fun stuff that happens around here, pretty much. If you're looking for great equipment at very competitive prices, please check out locksmithstoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I get most of my lockpicking equipment from. If you want to get in contact with me, contact me through any of the social medias, Discord, also send us an email, darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. If you like it, you see, please give a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it, big time. And until next time, cheers, guys.